the RVD tutorial on the susceptible, exposed, infected, recovered mortality model. In this one, we're going to just turn our model into a function so that we can call it later. Since we're going to need to evaluate this many, many times, it's better to have it in a functional format. If you know already how to do this, then you probably don't need to watch this video, but I'm going to go through it as well. So I'm just taking the code that we had last time. I put in a different infection rate, different beta, different gamma, different eta, just to mix things up so you can see how different pictures look. But what we want to do now is just turn this model that we have here, this out one that we've, we're storing the results in, and we want to make it a function where we put in information. Okay, so we want to put the information in and it'll run it for us automatically. So let's take this and turn it into a function, which will be pretty easy to do. So I'm going to do S-E-I-R-D-1 and I'm going to do function and then I'm just going to have to put in what my parameters are or my data is or information. These are initial values, I0, R0, and D0, and then I'm also going to need to put in my parameters. Alpha 1, Beta 1, Gamma 1, and Eta 1, and I'm also going to add in N1. And N1 is going to be how far I want to run this out. And the reason I'm going to do this is because notice we have this going out to 200. And 200 was a rather arbitrary number. So what I would like to do is just be able to put the arbitrary number in the function instead of having it hard-coded in. I can just enter it in however I want, and it'll work out fine. So here I'll change it with N1. Here I'm going to change it to N1. And now I can scroll to the bottom. Remember, we're just making this a function in this video, so we're not doing a whole lot of work here. So we're never going to change any of this. Now what we can do here is we're going to return out1, but I'm going to do a little bit of changing to out1 just to make life a little bit easier here. Since uh, we have this as a matrix, we can change this and turn it into a data frame, and that might be a little bit easier, especially when we hand the results back to be able to plot it. So why don't we do this? So why don't we take here and make a data frame? I'm going to call this out2 at the moment. And I'll have to return out to instead. So what I'm going to do is actually let me move this down one. Because all of the information here will be in one thing. So I'm going to make a data frame. And I'm going to have S equal to my out one, the whole column one. Then I'm going to have it give me E, which is out one whole column of two, the second column, and so on as I go down here. And then what I will be able to use is the dollar sign notation to peel off the pieces I want, and I won't have to remember which columns things are in, which can be a bit painful if you have lots of uh, columns that you have to worry about. It's better to have them nice and named and in a nice, easy format. So here we're going to have R equals out one, fourth column. And now we have D equals out one, and this is going to be the fifth column. And this should set us up. It's going to return it for us. And then we can look and see how this works. So here's our function. I know it's really hard to squeeze it all on the screen at once. But what I did is I just added a, a function call at the top, made sure I had my open brace. And then I added this at the bottom so that it makes it easier to deal with the results once I get them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run the entire thing here. So everything will be run. I have my function available. Now I can actually call my function. So here I'm going to make my out1, S-E-I-R-D, 1, S0, uh, let's see, what was it? Was the or E0... I0, R0, D0. Alpha 1 is already a number. We've already specified it. Uh, and as long as I put them in the same order, everything will be fine. Otherwise, I have to give it a list. A to 1. And here, I want to go out. N1 is equal to 200. And that's where this 200 is going to come in. We can change it because when we marry it up to the data, our data is going to be a different length. Okay, so here I can change in my plot as well. So if I run this, now out1 will be created. 
And then instead of having to worry about comma one, I can just do out one dollar sign. Oh, S is what I wanted, right? I can use this notation to make things a little bit easier. And it, it just makes life a whole lot easier when you're going down through here because you may not remember what's in column two. So you can do out one and then use the dollar sign. And that was E. And then here, this was I. This is at the dollar sign. And it should pop it up. What well, was R? And then the last one, D. Okay, and this allows us to remember which one we were looking at because we're using this notation. All right, so let's run it real quick, get the picture, and bingo, this is our picture from the parameter values that I set up. Now, the reason I wanted to have this function is because I want to change these parameter values in an easy sort of way. So we're going to work on that in the next video, but I will wait till then and see you there.